Hey everyone, welcome to Pep Talk TV. Today we have got special guest with us, Satya Ranjan. Welcome, Satya. Thank you. So let me give his quick, quick introduction. Uh, Satya Ranjan is an, is an advocate practicing in the Honorable Supreme Court and various high courts. He is also a central government senior panel counsel and standing legal counsel for AIMS, New Delhi. He has published numbers of legal research papers in national and international law journals. He has been invited by prestigious universities like Delhi University, Amity, Guru Gobind Singh IP University to deliver lectures and judge moot courts. Wow. That's quite an introduction, man. Thank uh, you, sir. If, if somebody asks for my introduction, I simply say I'm an, an, I'm an advocate of human nature. But you've got quite an introduction. You've really built yourself. Thank you. <laughs> I feel ashamed. <laughs> so, 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 so many people say a good lawyer is a bad neighbor. <laughs> what do you think of this? Is a good it lawyer is not a bad true. neighbor? It, it, it is not true. It is not true. <laughs> so a good lawyer can be a good neighbor as well, right? Yes. And what do, you, what do you think of this? The grannies used to say when we were kids, when you were a kid, perhaps your granny used to say the same, stay away from doctors and stay away from lawyers. <laughs> okay, they still say so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, they still say so. So, how are your corona vacations going on? It is going good. I am learning new things, researching on different points of law mm -hmm. and giving uh, interviews online. And great, uh, great. yes. Uh, so, so I, I what about you? Questions. I'm just doing my research, reading new stuff, as you know. I want to dig deeper, deeper, and deeper. So I'm reading philosophy, business, human psychology, human history. These are my areas great. of interest, actually. And okay, I, I would like to ask you, uh, with your permission, I would like to ask you a few questions uh, on the behalf of our viewers and friends and near and dear ones. The first question is, how are courts functionies functioning these days amidst coronavirus pandemic? How are they functioning? Well, see, if you are asking me if the courts are functioning, yes, it is functioning. The access to justice is preserved because it is a constitutional commitment. And uh, because of the national lockdown, there is a significant scaling down of the conventional operations in the presence of court. But yes, uh -huh. the courts are functioning. And to ensure that there is a continued dispensation of justice and at the same time there is a social distancing, the Supreme Court and the High Court has adopted various measures. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is helping the courts reduce the physical presence of lawyers, litigants, uh, mm -hmm. paralegal staff, court staff, media and other people in the court. Mm -hmm. And uh, as far as how it is functioning, on uh, on 13th on 13th they came up with a order that uh, from 16th of march onwards there will be uh, court functioning but there there is a entry regist uh, restricted only those okay. councils who are making oral submission only they are allowed inside the courts okay. others were not allowed uh, not allowed and on the very next day, the court also came up with certain other guidelines. They mm -hmm. uh, said that uh, if you want to go in, uh, no, there is a thermal screening of temperature that is must. And if there is uh, a high temperature, the person mm -hmm. is denied entry into the court. Okay. Uh, and on 23rd, on 23rd mm -hmm. of March, the court came up with a detailed order in mm -hmm. which the has restricted the matters that is being listed before the court from the urgent matter to extremely urgent matters. Only okay. extremely urgent matters will be heard and uh, same that is a rest, uh, restriction with regard to the entry and if and someone wants to I, I, yes? I would like to add one more thing here. You said ki extremely urgent matter. What about the urgent matters? The urgent matters will not be heard. Uh, it will not be heard. Uh, if you believe that the case is extremely urgent, you have to move on one page, uh, one page application to the registry uh -huh. and uh, saying um, in detail how you, uh, why you feel the case is extremely urgent and it needs to be heard. Mm -hmm. And after uh, the email is received by the registry, 
the application will be put uh, put up before the presiding judge and he himself will decide whether the case is extremely urgent or not and if it got it. thinks and if he thinks that it is not extremely urgent the case will not be listed and uh, but they yes, can wait you have, they can uh, yes yes uh, oh, they can okay. wait but they can wait but at the same time they can um, telephonically call to the judge on the very next day okay. between uh, 10:30 to 11 and uh, uh, mention the mention the case to the court and if the uh, judge is convinced telephonically he will mm-hmm. allow the matter to be listed in the court and al- mm-hmm. yes along with the application you have to give a consent for video conferencing in the supreme right. court and the high court the courts are not uh, uh, allowing physical presence so everything has to be done uh, via video conferencing and if you have the electronic facilities uh, with you the supreme court registry will give you a link they will call you up and you have to just sit down and uh, uh, join the video conferencing but in case you don't have the facilities with you you can go to the supreme court premises they have the video conferencing facilities you can join okay. there yes this okay. is how it is functioning and uh, as far as trial courts are concerned only the bail matters most probably and uh, those cases in which uh, the person is very old or mm-hmm. he or she is having uh, some uh, diseases then only the courts are hearing the matters yes okay. so it is only yeah. the extreme urgent matters okay thanks for your insight uh i would like to ask you another question it's a bit out of the context what do you think of this uh, pandemic is it pandemic or 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 panic demic or pandemic what do you think this is just out of the context see as a lawyer i cannot comment but as a normal uh, citizen uh, what my view is yes it is a pandemic people are giving a uh, different view uh, with regard to uh, pandemic people are saying it is a uh conspiracy and uh, uh the, the virus reached from china to different other countries to india to us to the entire uh, to china was in lockdown the, people are saying no but but, uh, but fortune uh, you know but interestingly the virus spread all across the country but it didn't reach the capital of uh, china china so people are giving that angle to it also so who knows there might be certain theories yes, yes 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 okay uh, and there are uh, messages being spread on social media websites about whatsapp group admins facebook group admins that certain actions can be taken so what is yes. actually happening or these messages are true or 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 false or somebody is spreading the fake news what is your take what would you like to say see i have also received one uh, message in whatsapp and uh, interestingly there is a link of one of the legal uh, app and okay. i am mentioning mentioning the name of the app it says mm-hmm. that after 12 o'clock you cannot uh, send any messages and other stuff yeah uh, but uh, this is not true this is not true the same website has also come up with a uh, clarification on 4th of april that this is a incorrect interpretation and people are spread, uh, spreading it deliberately uh, uh-huh. maliciously mm-hmm. and uh, as far as fake news is are concerned the government has moved to the supreme court seeking uh, a relief that there should be a curb in the spreading of this fake news but uh, supreme court was concerned supreme court was concerned with the uh, spreading of fake news but supreme court didn't pass any order with regard to uh, you know curbing the spread of these news is the supreme so no court order has been passed till date no supreme court didn't pass curbing the uh, fake news is but the supreme court said uh, the media should report it accurately and they should take care and at the same time the court was also concerned about the free discussion and open discussion with regard to corona so uh, yes people should act diligently people should act responsibly but as of now there is go but yes it is a punishable offense if you do, if you are doing it uh, maliciously with a malafide intention it is punished uh-huh. uh, it is a punishable offense uh, it is punished under uh, regulation 6 in delhi it is punishable under 
section 54 of the epidemic uh, diseases act uh, sorry uh, from of the D- uh, disaster management act and okay. there are other laws also yes it is a punishable offense it's a punishable and offense more, but uh, still order hasn't been passed but on the other yes. hand you are saying it's still a punishable offense yes Spreading yes and more, oh, yeah yes uh one more thing i just want to add that most of us forward the message as we receive it we don't uh, check the authenticity of the message uh for that i must say there is one of the judgment of madras high court which said if you forward it as it is simple forwarding is also endorsing the message you are endorsing the content of it so therefore if you are forwarding it and you know that so uh, the, the the message is uh, fake so you will be punished for that so even if you are forwarding a fake message it means you are endorsing that's what the court right. said right okay. right so it's still a punishable offense yes yes okay so how do you justify this this beating of of cops like cops uh, are thrashing people you can see certain videos although on the other hand people are saying it is mandatory cops are saying it is mandatory but some of the guys they have been beaten brutally on the roads so how would you justify this is there any law are they permitted to beat people like this under such circumstances no as far as beatings are concerned i do not endorse it completely and uh, but it is acting as a deterrence and uh, people are uh, watching those videos and people are you know uh, following the Uh, direction of lockdown and other things uh, i was calling my driver the other day and asking uh, uh, are, are you going to your hometown or going out he said uh-huh. sir after watching the videos that are coming up in whatsapp of the police traffic <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yes yes okay. so it is acting as a deterrent so this is setting an example as well yes yes okay uh, and and uh, certain questions were asked about the morality of lawyers i'm talking about nirbhaya case there was a there was an advocate and he was defending the accused and he kept defending till the very last moment then certain yes. people asked the questions about the morality of lawyers or advocate what is your take on this see often this question arises with regard to the uh, profession and morality but you must understand one thing advocates are the officers of the court mm-hmm. now they do not have the luxury of pick and choose the client anyone who is approaching the court he should defend him and yes provided he is paid the reasonable or the appropriate fees and uh, but the client, but the advocate has to defend him till the end uh, uh, irrespective of the fact how under, uh, undeserving how unpopular his cause is one should defend him and uh, as far as morality is concerned my, um, what my take is i think morality and legal uh, legal profession goes hand in hand and uh, uh, one is one is bound to Uh, you know one has the bounden duty to uh, defend a client but he or she is not bound to win the case at any cost mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. so there is there is no there, there is no question of any misstatement there is no question of any uh, you know misquotation there is no question of any uh, trickeries and fraudulent practices these practices might uh, you know give one uh, one's client a temporary satisfaction and he or she uh, might win uh, the case mm-hmm. get more briefs and uh, get more profits also but uh, ultimately he or she will lose the respect and uh, mm-hmm. respect is something that is that is something very big if mm-hmm. you lose the respect then you know, the, no matter uh, what you argue your arguments will always be you know taken uh, uh, with the presumption of uh, unfairness with the presumption of uh, unsoundness whatever statement exactly. you make that will be th- yes that will be that will be uh, you know um, uh, based on scrutiny and other things 
people so will start believe... judging you on the basis of your reputation right your past mm-hmm. practices and uh, past tracks i am reminded right. of one of the uh, i am reminded of one of the uh, speech of mr nageswar prasad he was the judge of uh, patna high court he mm-hmm. once said and he also mentioned it is in his book also mm-hmm. that there was a time that mm-hmm. uh, in the appellate courts judges used to accept whatever the lawyer says that this transpired in the lower court it was mm-hmm. never open to challenge mm-hmm. but uh, things have changed uh, drastically now people the now the courts do not uh, take the uh, version of the cl- of the of the lawyer as it is and most importantly i am also reminded of one of my teachings which i received from mr ramjet malani when i was interning under him he told me once that uh, you might lose a case but but don't lose a client you might lose a client <laughs> you might lose a client but don't lose the court you might mm-hmm. lose the court but don't lose your own conscience so this is what the de- uh, profession demands from you got it point taken point taken uh, what about this uh, pendency of cases like there are many cases pending i believe millions of cases must be pending and then certain people talk about the fast track courses or uh, courts the judiciary should speed up or or certain steps should be taken what would you say see pendency of case is one of the biggest problem before the judiciary and before the country also and uh, there are almost 3 crore cases pending 3 crore cases pending wow yes yes and in mm-hmm. the supreme court itself there are 60000 cases in oh, the yes. high court yes and in the high court we have something around 42 42 uh, uh, lakhs cases and in the district oh. courts we have 2.7 crore cases pending oh 2.7 crore in district courts yes. only mm-hmm. yes this is a biggest so what problem. can be done mm-hmm. uh see uh what can be done there are various measures that are suggested by different uh, uh law com- uh, by different experts including the law commission see you have to first understand that we do not have the infrastructure we have less amount of judges we have mm-hmm. a less number of uh, courts and mm-hmm. uh, so we have to increase all those things in india we have uh 10 judges the ratio between uh, the ratio between the judges and the population is 10 judges out of 1 million oh my god yes for 1 million the, people we have 10 judges 10 judges oh and in and in 1987 the law commission of india in its report said it has to be minimum 50 judges for 1 million people uh-huh. in 1987 uh-huh and we are in 2020 now uh-huh. so, but uh, we are still uh, lacking behind and we do not have uh, enough court and yes in the past year there is increase in the number of courts there are uh, tribunals there are different other forums but yes modernization and technology has to reach to different uh-huh. levels to the ground level and uh, this will help this will help this will help okay got it uh Yes, one more thing I uh, wanted to tell you mm-hmm. about the uh, about the cases that are filed by the government. Uh-huh. Government is the biggest litigant. There are numerous cases between one department and the other department, one ministry uh-huh. and the other ministry, which could uh-huh. have been you know settled el- elsewhere. Uh, elsewhere, there was exactly, no reason exactly. to. Yes, there was no reason to bring all those cases to the. no uh, courts and there are alternative uh, dispute resolutions available mechanisms available you can go the, for the, uh, arbitration you can go this, for mediation this adds on to already piled up cases right right right, right. Yeah, if, and people if, should go for the other alternative remedy that is what i am saying conciliation is there arbitration is there mediation is there there are different other mechanisms available pre plea bargaining so the, is there they are they are different government departments here and they keep fighting with one another and these things can be settled elsewhere 
Yes, yes. And this is not uh, the present government is doing. This is uh, being continued from the independence. So this has been going on since the independence time. Yes, yes. Okay. And the present government and the present government has scrapped many old archaic laws. And uh -huh. this is helping the cause, and I believe uh, they are moving in the right direction. So more laws in the future can be scrapped. Yes. Okay. Uh, and this brings to my next question. Uh, there are many aspirants, right? Many people want to be lawyers. They 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 want to be famous lawyers as well. But uh, fortunately or unfortunately, we have seen very few famous lawyers. So, what is your advice for them? What traits should they have, or what what sort of for the for the law have? aspirants? Exactly for the law aspirants. Well, see, uh, there are three things I can suggest, or three L's that I can suggest. The first mm -hmm. L stands for learn, learn the law or the current affairs. They mm -hmm. can read the newspaper. They can go to the website of the Supreme Court and the High Court. There are different uh, legal apps available. They can avail all those, and uh, they will be up to date. And the second mm -hmm. L stands for you know learn to question or a uh -huh. uh, you know analytical mind. One be an know. inquirer. Be an inquirer. Exactly. Not just be a believer. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. No matter whether a uh, case is uh, finally decided by the Supreme Court or High Court, you shouldn't take it as it is because the Supreme Court has said this. As a law aspirant or a law student, you should have the questioning mind. You should question. You should inquire. You should analyze. And yes, but by doing so, or uh, while doing so, you should have, mm -hmm. or you should give proper reasoning why you are doing uh -huh. that. Uh -huh. And the last L that is the linguistic skills. Linguistic skills. Yes, and when I say when I say linguistic skill, I doesn't mean the language only. Mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, the stage fear, the you know the proper persuasion way skills, body language, yes. all yes. these things matter a lot. Yes, yes. When you are going to the law school, you have to convince the moot court judges. When you come yes. out of the courts, uh, when you you uh, come out of the law school, you have to convince the real time judges if you are into practice. And mm -hmm. if you are joining law firms or corporates, you have to convince your seniors or the bosses. And uh, at times, you have to persuade your clients. Yes, yes. So you have to uh, learn the skill of convincing, and whenever you say something, you have to say something conv convincingly and with conviction. Got it. So be the master of your domain, be a questioner, be an inquirer, and improve your public speaking, linguistic skills, persuasion, convincing skills. So this is your suggestion for the law aspirants. One yes. last question before uh, I disappear. Uh, because yes. I'm also afraid of Corona, right? <laughs> Just joking. So, so like, uh, can we also suggest certain sections to be known by the common people? Like, uh, what sort of sections during, during this Corona? During this Corona? During this Corona, or in a general life as well, post Corona as well? Do we have certain sections that we can tell them that commoners must know? Right. Right. Uh, let me start from the Corona thing only. Mm -hmm. There is a there is a epidemic disease, eighteen ninety seven Act. Uh -huh. And uh, in Delhi we have a Delhi uh, COVID nineteen regulations of twenty twenty, which was notified on twelfth uh, of March by the Lieutenant uh -huh. Governor. Uh -huh. And uh, one should remember during this uh, during this time that the state government and the central government and all its um, uh, authorities have the power or have the authority to get into a premise if they believe that there is a uh, there is a apprehension of someone being infected in uh, corona or if there is a something that is hazardous to the public health mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so they can enter these places if someone asks you for that Please make sure that you 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 help them doing so because unless you do that, you will be held accountable. You will be held, you know, you will be punished for that. You will mm -hmm. be punished uh, under Section Three of the Epidemic Disease Act. You uh -huh. will be punished under Section One Eighty Eight, Two Sixty Nine, 
270 to 71 of the IPC and uh, you will also be punished under Disaster Management Act Section 51. And the punishment uh, starts from one month to six months to uh, one year to two years also. There is a provision uh, of uh, two years punishment also. So, so there are already uh, such provisions. Yes, yes. Huh. So if mm -hmm. there is a lockdown, if there is uh, um, a direction or a order uh, made by the public authority, you have to comply with that. This is with regard to the corona thing that I'm seeing. As far as the normal things are concerned, yes, if someone arrests you in between or something like that, there are different provisions. There are different provisions. And uh, there are see there are two types of things. One can arrest you with warrant or without warrant. If uh -huh. he or she is holding the warrant, then fair enough. But if he or she is not having the uh, warrant, you have the right to know the offenses or the particulars of the offense that is being committed and the mm -hmm. grounds on which this uh, arrest is being made. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, th there is section uh, 51, there is section 51 of the CRPC, there is article 22.1 of the constitution. In addition, there is a right to remain quiet, a right not to be you know, saying something that will incriminate you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in addition to that, there are, there are rights which you can avail, for instance, the right to medical examination, mm -hmm. the right to seek uh, legal aid, mm -hmm. uh, including the right to consult. And uh, yes, there is un also something very important. If there is no uh, chance of someone fleeing away, he or she can mm -hmm. request the police officer not to handcuff him. Okay. It is up to the discretion of the police officer to handcuff or no, but uh -huh. he or she can make such a request. Okay. And so as, this far as mm -hmm. yes, and as far as females are concerned, there is section forty six uh, four, in which uh, it is categorically mentioned that uh, the females cannot be arrested before the sunrise and after the sunset. Okay. Okay. And uh, if they are arrested, there has to be a female officer present while okay. arresting. So Without the, the pres basic presence things. of female officers, the females cannot be arrested no. in such hours, no. during such hours. Okay. During such hours. Yes. So these wonderful. are the basic things. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. So I, I believe we, we should end this uh, interview and wonderful conversation and wonderful insight before people end. <laughs> before people stop watching this video. <laughs> but but uh, one thing I would like to say here that the kind of inf information, the kind of information you have shared, it's really helpful, very good. I believe it's going to be really, really useful for the people whosoever is going to watch this video and, and whosoever is going to benefit out of this video. And thank you so much for joining thank us. You. I understand that, that the crisis is going on for you, for me, for all of us. But we have to stay strong and we have to keep spreading useful information. Right. <laughs> not fake so, news. Yeah, not fake news. And I would also like to say that a good lawyer can be a good neighbor as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, okay. So, let's stay in touch and uh, hope to see you soon after this lockdown. We'll have a coffee or, or perhaps we'll go for a lunch. Meanwhile, take care of yourself. I'm signing off. God bless. Yeah, thank you.